Windows NT4 was released to the public well beyond the use of floppies as the primary storage medium for a computer. It provides no options to install to a floppy as such. However, there are ways to boot a fully working Windows NT4 system from a handful of floppy disks. You just have to be willing to put in a lot of extra work. In order to accomplish this, you will need a few things. A working install of Windows NT 4.0. A copy of Windows NT 4.0 embedded. A Windows 7 PC. An MS-DOS system. We will be using MS-DOS 6.2 in this video, a handful of 1.44 megabyte floppy disks, and a lot of time. Once NT4 Embedded is installed on your computer, open Target Designer from the Start menu. Once open, click the little plus next to Examples, then the plus next to Minimal Node Network. We will be using this as our NT4 configuration, we just have to add one component to it. Navigate to System, Devices, Bus Devices, SCSI Drivers, and add AHA. 154x to the configuration. Once that is done, go up to the image tab at the top and select build and install from the drop down menu. If prompted to check for dependencies, click yes. In the build menu, make sure exclude help files is ticked and then click start. Click yes on the product identification screen and then wait for a moment. It will inform you when the build is done. You can close Target Designer now. Using Explorer, navigate to the folder where to build output to. Open the file boot.ini. In Notepad, we will have to make some slight changes to this file. First, replace every instance of multi in the file to say SCSI. Then after forward slash no debug, add forward slash max mem equals 16 and forward slash base video. Before leaving Windows NT, Insert a floppy disk and format it. Then copy boot.ini, ntldr, and ntdetect.com from our build folder to the floppy. We will be using this floppy later. On your Windows 7 PC, download the RAM SCSI.sys file I have linked in the description of this video. Also download and install the WinUHA program. This will be helpful for compressing everything to fit on floppy disks. You will need to have access to the Windows NT embedded image we just created, so somehow copy them over to your Windows 7 PC. Or if networking is an option, mount the NT4 drive as a network share. The first thing we need to do is install the RAM SCSI.sys driver into our system. Copy it into your NT embedded image by placing it in WinNT slash system32 slash drivers. Once you have done this, rename the file to ntbootdd.sys. Next comes the hard part. Open the Windows Registry Editor, and then load the system hive from your NT embedded image found in system32 slash config. You can load the hive by clicking on the H key local machine root key, going to file and click load hive. When asked for a name, enter an NT4. Once opened, navigate to NT4, control set 001, services AHA154X. We will be modifying this key to load our custom RAM SCSI driver. First, delete the image path and the plug play service type keys. We do not need these. Ensure the start key is set to zero as well. Then, rename the key from AHA154X to NTBootDD. On the left, click on the disk folder and ensure its start key is set to zero. Go through the other services listed and make sure none of them have start set to zero. If they do, change it to one. Ensure the AT API key has start set to one also. Once you have done that, you may unload the hive. Click on the root NT4 folder, then go to file, unload hive. Once you have done this, navigate to the system32 slash config folder in your NT4 image and delete any of the hidden files there. You may need to enable show system files to see them. These files are just logs that may increase the total size of our image if they are not deleted. Next, we will compress the entire image using WinUHA. Navigate to the location of your Windows NT image and select both the WinNT folder and the temp folder. Do not select any of the other files in the folder. Next, click Add Selected in the toolbar on the top. You can leave most of the settings as default, but change the compression dropdown from normal to best alz-3. Click OK and you should have a .uha file in the same place as your NT image. Rename this file to winnt.uha. For the final step, insert the floppy disk you formatted in NT4 and copy RAM SCSI.sys to it. Once it's on the floppy, rename it to ntbootdd.sys. You are now done with Windows 7. In the description will be a link to video.7z, a small handful of DOS utilities we will need for this to work. Download them and copy them over to your DOS machine. Copy the winnt.uha file we made in Windows 7 to this PC as well. Also take a moment and install pkzip onto the PC also. We will need both pkzip and pkunzip for this operation to work. 
Also, use DOS to format four floppy disks. Do not format the disk you made with NT4! The first thing we need to do was create an MS-DOS boot disk. Insert the first disk of the four disks you created earlier, and then type format A forward slash S to create a system disk. The name you give it does not matter. On the disk, create two folders, DOS and utils. Copy all of the files from my DOS utilities archive to the utils folder on the floppy disk. Also, copy pkunzip.exe to the same folder. Next, copy ramdrive.sys from your DOS install to the DOS folder on the floppy. In the description of this video, I will have the text contents for config.sys and autoexec.bat. Create those two files on the floppy and put the contents into each file. Next, insert the second disk of the four you formatted with DOS earlier. We will now span the archive across the disks. To do so, run the command pkzip and symbol a slash winnt.zip followed by the location of your winnt.uaj file that you copied to the DOS PC. This instructs pkzip to span the archive across as many disks as it needs to. If it asks for another disk, insert the next disk in the set you prepared earlier. Do not reuse disks, or use the DOS system disk, or use the disk you formatted in NT4. It may not need all the disks. If it doesn't, simply remove the unneeded disk from the stack. Once pkzip drops you back to the C prompt, we are now done with the DOS portion of this video and are ready to test it. Alright, welcome to the real life segment of this video. I have already prepared discs and we have a real computer that we will be testing this on. It's a Dell Latitude CPX. Let's go ahead and insert the first disc into the floppy drive. Press F. It's recommended that you use these bootable NT4 floppy disks on a real hard on real hardware. Because last time I tried it in VMware, it crashed VMware. So, yeah. Okay, then, take the first disc out. And we insert the disc, the second disc, that we started PKs it with. We put that into the disc drive. And press any key. As you can see, PK zip will load. And once the last disk, so in our case, it took a total of three disks to compress the entire NT4 to. So we insert the last disk. Then it's going to want disk one again. So we take that out and we put back in disk one. And now we wait. <phone rings> All right, use the next disc. So we take this disc out. We put in the next disc. Alright, and it is the last disc. So we take out this disc, and we put in the next disc in the set. And now it's gonna decompress our UHA file, which shouldn't take too long, but yeah. Oh, see, it's done. Then it says, Ins this won't happen for you. I had to do a bug fix because I missed a registry entry. But for you, it should just, just work. You shouldn't have to copy that file. But anyway, you can insert the last disk and then press any key. In this case, it'll say no bootable devices, but we can just press F1 to retry. And it'll start booting from the fifth disk, which should be the disk you made in Windows NT4. As you can see, NT4 or NT Detect. Checking hardware. Uh, 
And if all goes well, you shouldn't have a blue screen here. Or, it shouldn't have, like, crash log information on it. It should sit there for a couple minutes. And there you go. We have a full version of Windows NT. Well, I wouldn't say full. It's just the minimum version. There's not much on the system. If we change to the WinNT folder, you can see there's like nothing here. If we change to the system32 and just short by exe, there's also not much in here. What you can do, and once it's booted you can also take the fake disk out, what you can do is you can play with the Windows NT embedded target designer and add components, remove components, you can even make like other compressed archives that add to your install so you can add more components to it. But that's the entire process of booting Windows NT 4.0 from five floppy disks. Yep, that's all I got. Hope you enjoyed this video. And have a good day.